you know, I look at, uh, you know, how we as a province responded to the African American community when nobody else was giving them an opportunity, especially <coughs> African American males, to get an education. What did our friars do? They established a high school for them, uh, which began at Corpus Christi and then eventually became Hales. Uh, tremendous uh, response to a need that was not being addressed within the Chicago land uh, area. Uh, you know, I look at the call that we got, you know, from uh, San Antonio uh, to go back to San Antonio to take over those missions, to begin to reach out to the Mexican American communities that were there, uh, and to bring that Franciscan presence back. Uh, we freed up people to do that, uh, to go back there. We've already talked about the different missionary efforts. I mean, we were the first province in the United States when the call came out to send people to China, our province responded immediately uh, to that call and we sent people right away to China uh, in regards to that. That is true with Brazil. Uh, that has been true uh, with, with Zaire, which is now the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Uh, that's been true with the Project of the Order uh, in relationship to that. Uh, a great legacy, that, that sense of itineracy, that you know, if, if, we, if we're called to move on, we've moved on to meet a greater need, uh, whether within the church in the United States or whether within the order uh, itself. Uh, I admire our friars who went to Louisiana, <coughs> northern Louisiana, at a time uh, when the, cake, uh, the Ku Klux Klan was very strong. Our friars uh, literally preached on street corners trying to figure out who was Catholic and who wasn't Catholic. They had crosses burnt in front of the, the residence in which they lived, uh, but established you know, a Catholic presence uh, reestablished it, uh, or created it for the first time maybe, within a whole Bible Belt, Bible Belt area. Uh, you know, uh, it's already been brought up, Kid talked about it as, as risk takers, but you know, it's a great legacy uh, of our, our men of passion to venture forth into areas where, you know, we, we never went before and didn't know where we're getting ourselves into, but yet somehow trust. I look at you know, what we've done in New Orleans, even though we've relinquished New Orleans. Uh, you know, our presence down there over the years uh, was reaching out to some very marginalized people. It was, you know, the gay people, the, the, the ladies of the night, you know. Uh, Gratian Nozzle was, was a, a great minister to the ladies of the night and getting them reestablished in other professions and, and that. Our, our whole response to, uh, to uh, uh, victims of AIDS and establishing the Lazarus House. Um, uh, you know, when nobody else even wanted to touch that issue, uh, we were there. Uh, you know, it's a great legacy in regards to that. Uh, I see that as all part of the movement that we've had in the province. Uh, you know, we have some great men who have called us to that. I, I look at people like Gerard Scarborough, uh, Phil Markhorn, uh, men who, who, who realize that we got alcoholics there that you know, need to uh, uh, address their issues and we need to walk with them. We have people that are homeless, we have the mentally ill out there, we have people getting out of prison and have no place to go, we need halfway houses for them. Uh, and it was these men that, that called us to that kind of outreach ministry that has created the outreach ministries that we have uh, today in the province. Um, so, I, you know, I look at that history and I see a history of what I, I call that spirit of itinerancy. Uh, of being on the move, uh, and we've had great leadership to do that. Can I return with time? Just quarter, quarter, quarter two. Yes. Uh, I, I, one of the things that John said uh, flipped the switch in me. Um, not only did we embrace people outside, but we also embraced our brothers. I, you said the alcoholics, but I, I, you know, as a person who profited from lots and thousands and thousands of dollars worth of psychotherapy. Um, we, from the very beginning of recognizing that we had brothers who were alcoholics who needed to be helped to, to get themselves in a different direction. And then those brothers came back and demanded honesty of us, that the embrace of those poor um, in our very midst have, has called us to health, to challenge ourselves to growth, and to uh, do things I think we probably would not have been ready to do. And that's. You know, to, to say, to, to loud our provincials, our past provincials, and, and the people in the, who were in charge in the province who had the vision to be able to say, we can't lose these brothers. 
And they were just as much on the edge and on the margins as a lot of other people that we know. So that's very significant. I just want to take us to a second question, and then we really want to open this up to everyone for at least some minutes. Um, you know, the panelists are now going to work with us together, I think, and we'll open this up as much as we can. And what do we really take with us in terms of visioning for the future for us as a province? And what really is, is something we're called to be and called to do at this point in time? What's really essential for, for you know, who we are to become? Or as the general said, we're good, how do we get better? Um, I personally think that a lot of what's been said about our province we already have the ability to be part of what has been called this international era of, of religious life today. And the, the world at large has come to the doorstep of the province. And we haven't been a complete success in, in this, and we're still working with it, but I find it a source of extraordinary new life that we have brothers who have come from Latin America, from Asia, and Africa. This needs to continue just as much as we need to make the journey in that direction. We've done it before. We've done it in China and Brazil and far away places, near and far, into the unknown. We'll do it again. I think we're ready and equipped to do it. I think that's certainly part of visioning for the future. But that second question of the panel, just brief, and then we'll open it up for questions and comments. One of the things I was thinking when John was talking about itinerancy is that I think the friars in the province have a tendency to forget that we have been relinquishing places since we, be, we became, since we've come into the United States, yeah. since the 1800s. And so for them to say, you know, you know, we have to talk about that again. Well, if we want to be friars on the move, as John was talking about, which is our call, then, then that's going to be part of who we are. And yet we have to be open, uh, open to that and open to what the uh, future holds for us. And as Ken was saying, I believe that we are, you know, the cultures, so many friars are coming to us from so many different cultures, and we have to welcome them. 